Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video we'll be talking about cardiac metabolism, which is basically the energy requirements of the heart. So we know that the heart requires continuous amounts of energy because it is beating constantly and it gets this energy in the form of ATP. And the reason it requires this ATP is for its pumping mechanism and the regulation of ions, their movement in and out of the sarcolemma and regulating the ion concentration gradient. So the heart's oxygen requirements is about 15% of the entire organ. So the source of ATP for the heart depends on uh, the oxidation of substrates like glucose and free fatty acids. So the free fatty acids are going to come from the circulating free fatty acids in the blood and that comes from lipolysis in the adipose tissue and glucose which comes from the plasma glucose and the breakdown of glycogen stores. So glucose is going to get converted into pyruvate and then into acetyl-CoA and the free fatty acids are converted into acyl-CoA in the cytoplasm and acetyl-CoA in the mitochondria. Um, Acetyl-CoA then is going to enter the Krebs cycle and it's going to be used to produce ATP by oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. So what I'll do is I'll include a link to the Krebs cycle in the description below and to my gluconeogenesis video. So that will be in the description below just to save some time so we don't have to go into it too much in this video. Now when the body is in a fasted state, we have an increase in the circulation of free fatty acids and an increased myocardial uptake and they provide about 70% of the heart's acetyl-CoA. However, when we are in a fed state after, we, after we've eaten, we have increased glucose ingestion, so we have a greater myocardial oxidation of glucose and the oxidation of free fatty acids slow down. So things like the administration of ionotropic agents and hypoxia, which is where we have reduced oxygen to the heart, is what enhances myocardial glucose uptake. But on the other hand, when we have beta-1 adrenergic stimulation or via noradrenaline, or no epinephrine, or increased stress on the heart, we have, an, we have an enhancement of free fatty acid uptake. Now, lastly, just to finish off this video, uh, myocardial energy is going to be stored as creatine phosphate. Creatine phosphate Creatine phosphate is in an equilibrium with ATP, and when we reduce energy stores, creatine phosphate stores decline first. Now, things like cardiac hypertrophy, tachycardia, increased intracytoplasmic calcium and fibrosis all contribute to increasing the energy requirements of the heart.